Welcome back to your Pennsylvania ancestors. This is Denise Allen and I'm so thrilled to be back with some new episodes as part of season five and the adventure to find the origin of John Curry who died in 1923. So if you haven't kept up with the episode so far, I have been trying to figure out where did John Curry's family come from? How far back had, he, had his family been in Pennsylvania? And given the last name of Curry, I figured that they probably came from Ireland. So where did they come from in Ireland? Uh, that was one of those safe assumptions to make with a, a surname. And I am here to update you about a research trip that I took. So is it worth it to go on a research trip? Why, why go on a research trip? I'm going to answer that now in this episode. With a little bit of help from Honey the Cat. Before I get started with telling you all about this trip, make sure to like this episode, uh, subscribe to the podcast to get the next episodes. All those things help in terms of other people finding the podcast through the algorithms that everybody has up. And it just helps me to know that you like the content and you want to see more of that content. So my question I asked myself all winter long was, is it worth the time for me to do this research trip? Is it worth the effort? Is, is it even possible with all the shutdowns and restrictions around COVID? And would it be safe? Like, I don't know. So I plan to do it this summer. I thought that was probably a pretty good time. I managed to accomplish it. It went really well. And I'm gonna roll out over a couple episodes what I found and, and why to do it. First off, why do a research trip? For me, what happened as I was tracing this Curry family back, I got to that 1850 census. And if you've done genealogy, you know what the 1850 census means. It means you lose people, right? They all like mysteriously disappeared. All the people in the household are gone by the time you get to that 1840 census. And the gentleman that I got to, Robinson Curry, was born in 1826, right? This is a great age to find him in the 1850 census. I have him with a wife and a baby. So I have Robinson, Nancy, and Winfield, a great first name if you're trying to do research. And I'm like, there they are, that's my family. But I don't have that baby for the 1840 census and I don't have the wife, right? <laughs> because he's only 13 or maybe 10 or maybe 15, somewhere around there, right? The ages are never exact. So kind of stuck because the stuff that I can find on Ancestry and Family Search that's indexed and easily accessible all involves censuses, city directories, maybe cemetery listings, maybe I can get uh, church records, but none of that was helping with this family. So if I, if I was going to just try to finish this research using what I could find on the computer, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. A research trip involves going locally to where the records are. Now local records are usually records that are not digitized. It's not because people are trying to hide them and keep them from genealogists. It's because there's a lot of them. So I was looking for things that, again, are not digitized. So what, what am I talking about here? By going locally, I'm looking for local church records. I'm looking for diaries and journals. I'm looking for photographs. Again, not digitized, but ones that people donated to historical societies. I'm looking for local maps. I'm looking to find cemetery indexes. A lot of times genealogical or historical societies, volunteers, way back before there was the internet, walked cemeteries and wrote down the headstone inscriptions. And this is perfect because maybe they did this 50 years ago or 70 years ago. Well, those headstones might not exist anymore. They might have deteriorated. They might have broken or disappeared if they were the little ones for infants uh, and children. I'm looking for locally also tax records at a courthouse. Those are great to get. 
because I have names and, and by year of where people lived in a township or a borough. I'm looking for all kinds of court records through the courthouse. People solved their disputes with each other through the courts. There weren't police, <laughs> there was a sheriff, but there weren't police. So I'm looking for all these kinds of things. If you're thinking to yourself, well, I wanna to try to figure out a plan like this for myself, so I could do a research trip or at least contact local organizations so they can do the search for me and send me documents. If you go to paancestors.com backslash members, you can find videos that I did to help people locate items on online catalogs, contact local historical societies, genealogical societies, local archives, and then how I actually planned my research trips. I talk about it in detail for my members. So go to paancestors.com backslash members to access that information. And you can also ask me questions and have me consult or you can bounce ideas off me for where you think you want to go or what you want to do or what you want to find. Before I left on my trip, I went through and made a list of what possible cemeteries John Curry could be buried in. I was looking at John Curry and then his father, William I. Curry, and then his father, Robinson Curry. So I was trying to find the grave sites of all three of these men and their spouses. So starting with John Curry, I already covered that I thought he was buried in one of two places. So Lock Haven was mentioned, I believe, and Belfont was mentioned. Then the other possible place was Gray Cemetery. So I'll just have you wait till you find out where he is. But to find him, I actually had to call the cemetery. So this is where the strength of find a grave and also the internet in general is once you have a location to go to some of these cemeteries aren't currently open that that you know i'm researching in they closed years ago and they have a caretaker well it's locating that caretaker so it involved for me a couple phone calls i called a nearby church and they were so nice and kind they called me right back and said here's the name of the caretaker call him I called the gentleman, we spoke on the phone for 15 minutes, he was so warm and welcoming, he said, I'll even mark the site for you so you don't have to walk the whole thing back and forth. But he told me what row, how many spaces over, and then because plots are usually bought in pairs, right, there's usually a husband and wife, um, who was buried in the plots? So for my Curry family, they had two pairs next to each other. So there were four plots all together. So none of these were on find a grave and I found them through doing the research ahead of time, looking at where the family members were buried, and then two, making the phone calls ahead of time to confirm. So I just didn't drive and, and stop at places. In this circumstance, I saved that part for later. Here I am at the grave sites of John Curry and his mother, uh, Mary, and William is somewhere here. It looks like his grave is not marked, um, and it also looks like John's grave in particular needs a little bit of love. It seems to be granite and really grown over with a bunch of organic matter, let's just call it. Now, John's wife is my great-grandmother, and she's actually buried in Montgomery County. She outlived him about another 63 years. By that point, our family had kind of disconnected from the family up here, so she didn't join him in this gravesite. There's just something very satisfying about finding the resting place of ancestors and just a really deep appreciation that if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> it's kind of amazing to think. 
it was such an emotional moment for me to finally find their resting places and it was a real thrill there was something about standing in the place where i knew other family members stood for these burials and just very very emotionally moving now for robinson curry and his wife nancy bloom curry bloom her uh, birth name i did not have the same amount of luck for Robinson and Nancy, I did do a lot of cemetery walk. Just trying to find them, you know, it's like, well, I know a lot of blooms are in this cemetery and I know a lot of curries are here. And I did not have any luck locating their graves. And I will tell you why in the next episode, I figured it out <laughs> why I couldn't find them. But I'll save that for the next episode of Your Pennsylvania Ancestors. <laughs> this is Denise Allen. Again, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, leave a review. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you next week. I hope you discover lots about your Pennsylvania ancestors like I discovered about mine.